Unlock the power of your mind. This is Provocative Enlightenment with Eldon Taylor. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. This is an hour devoted to learning something more, not just about the world we inhabit, but about how, what, and why we think and believe as we do. An hour for the open-minded, willing to challenge some of those old ideas behind what we think we know, who we are, and who we might become. I am Eldon Taylor, and this is Provocative Enlightenment. All right, let's begin by inviting you to our chat room today. My partner, Ravinder, awaits you there now. You can log on by going to eldontaylor.com forward slash chat. That's E-L-D-O-N-T-A-Y-L-O-R dot com forward slash chat. So, Ravinder, say hello to everyone and tell us all about the chat room. Well, hello, everyone. Of course, the chat room is up and the chat is very lively there. One of the other things that you may want to be aware of, too, is... Whoever the guest is we have on, I include links on the page to additional information and any other contact information they may have provided. So come to eldentaylor.com forward slash chat. All right. Now, every week I read some of your letters as our way of paying respect to the very important role you play in making this show successful. Last week, our guest was Dr. T. Lee Bauman, and we discussed theoretical physics. Everything from the erasure experiment to the Copenhagen paradox. Bottom line, in order to grasp the universe as quantum physics currently describes it, we must allow in the supernatural. Why is that? Simply because our understanding of the world does not include actions witnessed at the quantum level. The only plausible explanation must therefore include something beyond our understanding and outside of the rules we have come to know and intuit as those governing our universe. Such things as timelessness, action at a distance, retroactive behavior, and so forth require the insertion of something beyond the scope of the so-called natural, and thus the supernatural. Now, Dr. Bauman further suggests that it is light we find responsible for this confusion or supernatural phenomena, and ergo, light is God. It is, after all, how God is referred to in the creation epics. Now, whether or not you buy that, it's still a relatively cogent argument. Loretta wrote, a very enlightening show today. I learned so much, more than I ever learned in a science class. I am very grateful to you, Eldon Taylor and Ravinder, for such great choices in guests to interview and the questions you ask. Sure do wish it could be a longer show. Now to research quantum eraser experiment. Did you look those up, Raph? Not yet, I haven't. You didn't. <laughs> Mark you wrote. You worked me too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Mark wrote, radio show guest Dr. T. Lee Bauman introduced an important question, which has been raging in the scientific community for decades. Would science suggest that our minds may be deceiving us and that the world, when we are not observing it, is totally different? According to the Copenhagen interpretation, our minds do deceive us and the world is not what it seems. Reality as we know it is made up in our heads and not out there. According to the interpretation, a tree only takes the form of a tree when someone's consciousness perceives it. Otherwise, when there is no consciousness to perceive... It as such, the tree doesn't really exist as an object, but returns to light waves in a state of timelessness. Mark continues, in other words, things in reality only exist as such when they become the objects of the subject's consciousness, and the objects they become are not necessarily as they really are in reality, but something made up in our imaginations or minds. I take issue with the notion that our minds may be deceiving us, and that the world, when we are not observing it, is totally different, close quote. Well, Mark, that is precisely something Dr. Bauman and I discussed, and we agreed on the air that it makes no sense whatsoever to suppose that once something is observed, it needs continual observation in order not to blink out of reality. That is, even if it did require the act of observation to initially manifest in our physical world. And if you recall, where the Copenhagen... Uh, um, issue is concerned, only 42% of the physicists in the survey uh, that I covered, discussed last week, agreed that uh, that Copenhagen had things right. Scylla, from our chat room, commented, 
I must admit this is not a subject you can listen to while trying to balance your checkbook. Now, Scylla, I have to admit that I got a good chuckle out of that one. Nathalia wrote, I love your show, Eldon. Thank you for inspiring me. Tony wrote, if we had more souls like yours, earth could be paradise. All the hearts and souls you have touched with your life's work, your devotion and dedication to discover the magic and power within our minds. What a great legacy of the power of manifestation for all of us. Well, Tony, your words are truly humbling. I am indeed honored and I will do my very best to always live up to them. Moving on, Dev Road, I have used your self-motivation CDs for many years now. Thank you so much for this wonderful InterTalk technology. Mary Road, I listen to your shows and appreciate your compassion and generosity. Last week, I was blessed to hear that you have MP3 materials for free to share with the public. I would love to listen to them as I make my own spiritual journey. Well, we invite all of you to take advantage of our Pay It Forward program and pick up your free MP3s today. There are several titles to choose from, and these are not samples. They are the real deal, the patented and scientifically proven effective Intertalk technology. No one else can truthfully make that claim. So just go to intertalk.com and choose free programs from the left-hand navigation pane. It's really that easy, isn't it, Rev? Of course. Why do we do this? To make things easy. Well, you look like you're kind of dozing off there, so I thought I'd wake you up. Never. We'll bring never. you to the party. You're, I'm at the you're party. with us now? I'm partying in the chat room. Oh, i cool. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's all the time we're going to take for letters today. We can't get all of your remarks on the air, but I want you to know your comments definitely impact our programming. I invite you to opine by sending your email to Eldon at EldonTaylor.com or by joining me on Facebook. And once again, we both appreciate and thank you for your feedback and continued support. Now to today's show, Wicks of Wisdom. Okay, what exactly is a Wick of Wisdom? You know, when we scheduled this guest, I said, where's the book? Well, there wasn't a book. Well, a Wick of Wisdom is about a candle. For centuries, candles have been used throughout the world in spiritual practices. As it turns out, candle colors, the shape of the flame, the duration the candle will burn, and so forth, all frame the purpose and the utility underlying the usage of different candles. And that is true whether the purpose is for spell casting, spiritual works, religious ceremonies, voodoo, or almost any other use, except perhaps the practical application when the power fails and I just need a light. (laughs) Then utility deems it quite functional, in my view, to burn any color or shape of candle so long as it does provide that light. Now, there are those that read candle flames, I've learned, and with some psychics, the candle flame becomes a focal aspect of a personal reading. We all know the ambience that resides in a room when it is lit only by candles. Sometimes this produces a romantic mood, and sometimes it sets the frame for terror and horror. Candle arrangements also imply different functions. Everything from the number of candles to the geometrical shape formed by multiple burning candles conveys a special meaning. So understanding the wick, the candle, turns out to be quite a bit more involved than I might have just assumed from my reading of Robinson Crusoe and the removal of wax from berries. And that realization urges many more questions. Our guest today is an expert on candles amongst her many other gifts. Dr. Linda Salvin is one of the first original radio psychics, having begun on FM in 1994. Having survived a plane crash followed by two more NDEs, she became extremely psychic. Following surgery in 1991, she became a metaphysical healer, and after surgery in 96, she became a trance medium. Neither by choice, she says. Linda is the recipient of the Be Real Broadcast Award for her outstanding psychic show. Her copy reads, quote, I have helped thousands of people in a near two-decade career. I developed the spiritual candle line, Wicks of Wisdom, which helped people achieve their goals using ancient candle major techniques. Often termed as the Psychic Psychic, I read for psychics across the country, work to heal, enlighten, channel, and predict for my clients. Channeling creates the comfort and closure needed following a loved one's death. 
With a master's in public health from the University of Michigan, I earned a Ph.D. in metaphysics from the American Institute of Holistic Theology in 2008. Close quote. Okay, now all of this adds some additional dimensions to our conversation with Linda, so let's get her in here. Welcome to Provocative Enlightenment, Dr. Linda Salvin. Hello, Dr. Eldon Taylor. Thank you for having me on the show. It's quite a pleasure. Well, it's indeed my pleasure. I've been looking forward to this conversation. But I have to start with your story. Sure. In the setup piece, the idea that what you do, how you do it, why you do it, none of it is a matter of choice. Uh, all of it only after the three NDEs. That's simply too compelling for me to ignore. <laughs> so let's begin, if we can, with your story. Please share with our audience exactly what happened. Sure. Can I just add that you were on my show over 10 years ago before you got your show and became who you've become over the years. I've watched your career grow and expand as well. So now the table's turned, and it's, it's a delight. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thank you, Linda. I was... Uh, working as an environmental health specialist in 1981, and on the way home from a flight from Northern California to Southern California, the Boeing 737 crash-landed and cracked in half on the 17th aisle, of which I had a premonition just an hour later, uh, earlier before takeoff, but it, I'd never had a premonition like that before, so I didn't know what it meant. But when I slid down the ramp, I had an out-of-body experience, and some people have told me I'm a walk-in because I, my personality changed. Everything started changing. But that day, I was like split in half where I stand five feet eight, and then another part of me, which was all energy, which I now know, um, stood about 50 feet above my body. So it was like being a cyclops, you know, with one eye at five eight and one eye looking out at 50 feet above me. And that sensation lasted for a good three to six month period. I don't even remember now, but it was quite a long time. And um, it was part of the integration process of uh, out-of-body, soul exchange experience. And whatever entered me was very psychic, because I wasn't psychic before. I believe we all have intuition, but we don't all have psychic ability. It's a very different science form and, 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 and activity. As far as the healing process, it took about six years to heal from the plane crash and the trauma, but what happened along the way was on my way to a job interview, I got hit by a fire truck and had another out-of-body experience, wow. and that was 82. And in 84, on a rainy night, I totaled a car in Los Angeles and had the white light experience. And as God is my witness, and those that are listening, yourself included, if you get chills, you know I'm telling the truth, I uh, was spinning out in my car, and a white light went through the, through the top of my head, into the ceiling of my car, into the heavens, and a loud voice, the same that spoke to me coming down the ramp in 1981, and I heard it again in 1984, said, you can come with us now or stay and do, and I was given a message. And when the paramedics came to get me out of my car, I just said, they want me off the planet, they want me off the planet, because I didn't know what was going on all those years of trauma, near-death experiences. Nobody was talking about it back then. It was still, quote, in the closet. And, um, I mean, Edgar Casey had been the major psychic besides Nostradamus. We weren't talking like this back then. So I was all by myself trying to figure it out. But um, when I stopped running, Eldon, and the fear, I cannot explain the fear and the anxiety that these events put me through. But when I started to calm down and say, okay, God, what do you want from me, and, and, and why is this happening? When I became spiritual and started seeking spiritual advice and source, it all changed. So I was led to this career from what I was doing, and um, the less I fought it, the more it opened. Sounds to me like the shoehorn was fitting you more than you were being led. <laughs> yeah, but it's not something I considered. It's it's something that happened. And, um, I mean, I've been interested in holistic health, having been an epidemiologist and environmental health specialist and then taking care of self, but not as a career and not as a psychic where I'm helping people with their predictions or healing people with my healing abilities, which came after some surgery, or um, the channeling like I wrote um, after more surgery. Um, it happened after I had about 60 tumors removed from my hips and thighs, which was the result of healing so many people. I put the energy back in me. I, it's just not something I wanted to grow up to be a medium. It didn't work that way. <laughs> right. 
Now, you know, you, you've introduced several terms here. I'm just going to have you stop for a minute. Sure. And let's let's make sure our audience is clear on it. Uh, it's a walk-in. Uh, there's a difference between being psychic and being a trans medium, and, right. and they are fundamentally different. Correct. So tell us about how you awaken to your psychic ability and then differentiate each of those terms for us, sure. if you would. Sure, sure. Um, about a month after the plane crash, a friend of mine said, you should go see the psychic. She'd be able to help you, because I was just in a daze and shock and turmoil and not in disbelief you need to go through a trauma with post-traumatic stress disorder you know it's like the the soldiers coming back from war you see or experience something too big just like yesterday just like yesterday in boston you know it's right. too big but um i went to this woman and her back was to me when i went into her home and she said you're a walk-in and i said what's a walk-in she goes this when somebody's close to death and they, they have soul exchange and i said i was just in a plane crash and she started explaining things to me, and then she told me to read Ruth Montgomery's book on uh, Strangers Among Us on walk-ins. And I did, and I started to understand certain things, but it took a few years for it to absorb. And what happens is there's a soul exchange so that the body of that human being can go out and do things that it was meant to do in the first place. And that I don't know because I never had aspirations to help people like this. Um, then the walk-in would take over certain aspects of my memory, where a lot of my memory from my life prior to 27 years of age was very faint. As I moved forward spiritually, the integration process began, and that's why it took about six years for all of this to come together. And um, this one psychic said, whoever introduced a psychic? And I'm like, what? I'm not psychic. And then it started to prove itself that whatever came out of my mouth started happening for people. It was very strange. The psychic definition for me is my ability to help people see their future. I'm very good in timing of events where most people cannot read time. I can read time. I can pick up names of certain people at times. I can see um, with the stock market, I can see personal jobs, family, marriage, things like that. I don't like doing world events. I don't want that responsibility. I've done it. I don't want it. Um, Healing. I have a metaphysical gift where after some surgery in 1991, 10 years after the plane crash, I had surgery and I started getting energy out of my hands. And um, the first person I healed was a woman who was a confirmed MPD, multiple personality disorder with 26 personalities. And I put her back into one. Her mother flew in to say thank you to me from Arizona. I mean, it's all documented. And my healing career began to integrate along with the psychic services. Then... I was chosen out of 365 psychics to do a nighttime radio thing in Los Angeles on KBIG with FM, and they were just starting psychic radio back then, and it was in competition uh, with another station in town that was doing love letters. And I got the job. And then from there, I syndicated my show into over 300 markets back then, through the 90s into the early 2000s, and then the Internet came along and things started changing. And... um, From there, in 96, I remember I had uh, some tumors developing, and I had to have them removed. turned out there were over 60 of them. And um, when I was healing, I had a client who asked me about his deceased wife, and the next thing I know, she was coming through me, even though I said, oh, I don't do that. And I became a medium. Mm -hmm. So the mediumship is, the, the healing is where I remove blocks, obstacles, negativity from the bones, cellular structure, and tissues of the body. Of, of old energy that has us depressed or repressed or suppressed and gives back life in a very positive manner. And the, the channeling is communicating with the spirit from the other side, which I often find gives the communication closure and comfort people are seeking through grief. So right. all of this transformed within me, and each incident of negativity that I went through took me to a positive change in a career venue so I evolved into this metaphysician from epidemiology and health education, which is all basically related because it's health in the body, but from a different perspective. Because as you know, um, the esoteric aspects and the internal aspects of our life, once we heal that, the rest is cake. So now, Linda, then with that background, how did, I mean, what took you to candles? Ah, Great question. In 1999, I was on the air, 
And um, I had a, a relationship at the time that I was trying to manipulate, and I knew people who do candles, and there were candle places, and I was kind of scared. There's Pagan, there's Wicca, there's Santa Rhea. You hear all the negatives about voodoo, which actually means healing. And um, whatever I tried didn't work. Then I was referred to somebody in Los Angeles, went to the guy's store, came home with three sets of candles and oils and herbs, and thought, all right, let me try this one more time. And it started working. So I went on the air one night. I said, okay, guys, you're not going to believe this. However, I've got these candles, boom, 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 one's for money, one's for removing negativity, and one's for love. I came home to 25 orders. (laughs) Wow. So Wicks of Wisdom was born on the radio, and I've been selling them sight unseen through my radio show and on the Internet ever since. But... Basically, what I have found is that people want more than just a prediction or the healing or the channeling. They want to participate in their own spiritual growth as well, and the candles motivate what's supposed to be. I don't know how it works, because that's why it's called magic. But there's (laughs) herbs and oils and color, and like you were saying with the flame, it's all tied into theory that can be, it's over, you know, 3,500 years old. Kabbalah is part of it. It's um, quite a ritual, and what I did was take basic theory, removed all of the stigma of the occult, named them for mainstream wicks of wisdom, wisdom meaning the unknown and and, dis- and, and, and wonderful knowledge, you know, beyond cognitive th- thought, and I learned about the colors, I learned about the different formulas. And it's in the formula, Eldon, that makes it work. And people say, oh, I've used other people's candles, but mine work. So say you and Ravinder are making spaghetti sauce, chocolate brownies with almonds, no, I mean with walnuts, and a Caesar salad. You've got three different foods, three different textures, three different recipes that if you put tomatoes in your brownies, I don't think it's going to taste good, (laughs) nor do I think chocolate in a Caesar salad will make it work. So You've got your ingredients. It's the same thing with the Wicks of Wisdom. The ingredients of the recipe of the formula that I use in my oil combination, coupled with certain powders, coupled with the flame and the color, all combine to make money and success for money, passing exams, promotions, stock markets, selling homes in the recession or whatever. Um, good luck power to remove blocks, obstacles, negativity, curses. Soulmate power to bring in the right soulmate or companion, or if you're in a relationship, to enhance what's there. And then health and wellness that I've seen people um, allegedly heal from cancer. I've seen people get rid of canker sores. I've had people come out of depression who were suicidal. I mean, I have hundreds of stories, as you do. But through the Wicks of Wisdom, they work like a prescription for your soul. And um, I personalize the petition. There's something that goes into the flame for each and every person so that it's special for them. So it's out there, but not quite as packaged as what I've done over the years. And, so um, now you, you, you'll do the pouring, you'll do it all then, right? I Is that right? I buy everything. You don't have to go to the stores, the apothecaries, the psychic shops where most of the time you're not going to get all of the ingredients that you need. You're not going to get pure oil like you need because a lot of it's watered down because of the price of what it is. So I've taken the oils, the herbs, the powders, the parchment paper, the candles, and you say, I really need money. I need to get a better job. Okay, money and success power. Boom, the box goes out. You get everything with a CD, a booklet, and gemstones as well. Sounds oh, exciting. There. I'm going to ask you to hold it there, yeah. Linda, because we've got a hard break coming up. I don't want the computer to play over us. Uh, listen, lindasalvin.com. Take a look at it. Go go to Linda's site. We're speaking with Dr. Linda Salvin about Wicks of Wisdom and her life as a psychic. If you're not already in our chat room, now is a great time to join in the conversation. We have a short film for you today of our guests so you can put a face to the voice so just go to eldentaylor.com forward slash chat do stay tuned we'll take some of your calls uh, in the next half hour and you don't want to miss what's coming up after a few words from some of our friends
Unlock the power of your mind. This is Provocative Enlightenment with Eldon Taylor. And welcome back. If you just joined us, we're speaking with Dr. Linda Salvin about Wicks of Wisdom. But before we get back to the show, I want to invite you to join me on Facebook. I post regularly everything from where I am and what's on next to the latest in science, technology, and consciousness studies. And from time to time, some of my own opinions about the world we live in. I'd also like to remind you to be sure and sign up for uh, my free newsletter when you visit my website and get your free MP3. All right, let's get back to the show. Before the break, Linda, uh, you were telling us that basically you do everything, that these candles are, well, I implied prepared for the individual or for a specific need, or is it both? It's both, Elvin. I took basic candle magic as I was trained, what, 15 years ago? And when Wicks of Wisdom was being developed, I would sit in my garage in, in the apartment and futz around with, like a chemist. I would test this oil plus that oil plus this oil equals this result. And when I would ship my candles, I would I give people three candles because everything comes in threes. The power of three is very important with the Wicks of Wisdom, just like you see the pyramids are a triangle, the uh-huh. power of triangular energy. I send everything in threes. Um, the uh, oils would be numbered, but now they're just color-coded, depending uh, which set people are getting, the power wicks, which were on television in an infomercial, versus uh, my regular classic wicks, which are basically the usual candles, which are 7-inch novenas. But it's the oils that equal the formula that, make the magic, along with the color, because we have green for money and success power that we used on TV. We have pink for soulmate power if you're in a relationship. We have the red to attract someone new. We have the purple for the good luck and the yellow for health and wellness. And then we color-coded. Instead of having four to seven little half-ounce bottles of oil, we redid the formula into two-ounce bottles to fit in the one candle. So everything has been proportioned. Everything is measured. Everything is to the letter. And only the man who makes my oils and I know what the formula is. So, so now, if someone wanted a, a specific candle for them, yep. not not just a candle for prosperity, how would, how would they go about it uh, would arranging on that? what it is that they're needing to affect in their life. So if it's still money and success, there's a generality, but there's also a petition that I can't go into all of it on the air because I can't give it all away. Uh-huh. But um, if people, it, it works for over 90% of my clients. I have repeat business constantly and always new people, and it's wonderful. I mean, I ship all over the world, and um, anybody that has an issue with money, love, luck, health, legal, um, uh, an annoying neighbor, uh, somebody that never <laughs> shuts up, I can quiet people down. I can, I've helped people improve their job situation with some of the people that they weren't compatible with. I've won, I've seen people win um, appellate cases in the legal system. I mean, it, I've seen people not want to commit suicide. I have an FBI agent from D.C., uh, celebrities, and uh, people have won Academy Awards. People have sold houses when they say, oh, no, the market's never going to budge, you know. It right. breaks through that spiritual energy. And like I always say, if it's meant to be, it's going to happen, and it'll happen fast. If it's not, you can burn a thousand candles. It's not against God's will. It's not mad. It's not. It's not a spell. That's different. I'm not doing spell work, casting spells. This is definite energy in the light with God. I have um, a Catholic deist around me. I have um, I have rabbis who believe in me. I have men of cloth that see the spirituality. And there's even a priest in my infomercial, which is now on YouTube. And, right. Uh, and, you know, when any anyone Googles you, uh, one of the things that they find right away is uh, the number of testimonies that are yeah. out there. Testimonies on YouTube, test- you know, that are testifying to the kinds of things that you're saying. However, and, and whatever the means or mechanisms are, uh, it definitely appears that it works. But now, Linda, you mentioned law enforcement. Stop As a psychic, right have you there, worked right with law just, enforcement? Let me, let me just say one thing. Let me just sure. say one thing. Before I went through the plane crash, hit by the fire truck, totaled the car, had all those surgeries, became a psychic, a healer, and a medium, and if I heard this show, I'd think the lady was nuts. <laughs> but having lived it and having created it 
and I'm from the San Fernando Valley. I was a Girl Scout. I wanted to be Joni Mitchell. I mean, you know, all this <laughs> stuff. I'm just a normal person that weird things happen to. I've survived over nine lives, and I'm here to help. Now, I, I want to ask you something <laughs> while you're right there. I'm just going to freeze you in time, if I may. Yeah. Um, once upon a time, I was involved in a very serious accident that to this day I don't know. You know, I don't know how I lived through that, okay? There's a whole unexplained event, but that's another story. Nevertheless, my mother said to me, are you a walk-in? Your mom now, I had that? no idea what a walk-in was. You know, at the time, it was like, I mean, that was completely out of the, oh a my what? God. Where, where does that come from? And and I can tell you that since then, of course, I've, you know, taken it a little more seriously and looked into it. But I'm going to, here's my question to you. Do you feel like you are any different a person than you were? I mean, discount what you do now. Yes. But the person itself, do yes. you feel that you're any different a person today than you were before this event Absolutely. we'll call the walk-in? No doubt about it. Absolutely. And I work real hard to try to bring who I was in alignment with who I've become. And even like with my sisters or my father, they'll say, remember this, remember that? And I don't, but I pretend that I do. Interesting. Because the memory is different. So now listen, let's get back to the candles for a minute because I'm going to take you. I know you're a walk-in. I know you're a walk-in. You can't do this work unless you had that kind of wisdom and knowledge. You just can't. The average person doesn't go into metaphysics. They just don't. It's it's too big. You have a gift. Okay. Let's let's get back to Linda (laughs) Salvin. (laughs) The duality of the mind. If I wanted, listen, if I wanted to... Uh, reach out to you mm-hmm. to get my custom candles yeah. or to acquire candles, the kinds you've been telling us about, to learn more it's, and, and so forth. Tell me where I would go and what do I do? LindaSalvin.com, WowWTVOffer.com shows the infomercial and um, the packages. Or they can just call me direct at 888-509-1077. That's 888-509. Five zero nine ten seventy seven, and if anybody calls with regards to the candles and Elden show, you'll get a ten percent discount. Now, what did you want to know about the law enforcement? Okay, now so the reason I wanted you to plug that in there and get it in now, so as we may run short of time at the end of the show for it, is you know I kind of promised our audience today they're going to get a treat of treats i mean this is the psychic's psychic right. so i'm going to we're <laughs> going to take a couple of calls and give a few people the opportunity to talk to you and you utilize that gift today Perfect. but before we do let's let's swing clear back around and let's approach the psychic aspect now a formal law enforcement person i have used psychics have you worked with law enforcement linda Not directly. I don't want to. I choose not to. There was only one time I was with a a detective who asked me to listen to a tape that he had given me about a potential murderer, and I nailed it. I I read everything about the person. I I talked about what he had done, and I I could tell just from the voice. I read voice, and um, he was stunned by what I did, but I don't want the gruesomeness. I don't want to go... CSI hunting. I don't. I don't, don't want to. Life's bad enough. I get upset if a cow dies. You know. I. I, I don't. I can't handle the gruesomeness of life. It's. It, it's bad enough just trying to keep people's lives on path. And I just gotcha. keep it. Okay. Simple. Tell us this. Mm-hmm. What happens to you when you do a reading for someone else? Mm. A lot of times the energy will be so intense that my face will contort, the energy will come out of my hands, I will become very drained, very tired, I yawn as the energy pulls in, Um, and it depends if it's a channeling versus a reading versus a healing. The healing, I'm almost like out of my body just going through color words and and vibrations that I use with people, and um, the reading is a little different depending on the level of spiritual growth that person's at. The less spiritual and open they are, the harder the reading, but I get through it. Okay, now, you know, this is provocative enlightenment, so I'm going to ask a couple of tough questions here before we go to the phones. How accurate do you think you are, and have you ever been just blatantly wrong? Oh, gosh, yes. I'm the first to admit I'm never right all the time. Nobody's ever right, even Sylvia Brown. Nobody's ever 100% right. That's God's job. We are human. 
Um, I would say I run in the 90%, 90 percentile. Most of my um, predictions come true, and maybe one or two might be off. People go, well, you said it would happen in January, but it took till March. Well, excuse me. Some people would give me readings, and it happened six years later, you know. But, um, you know, it, 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 it's an estimation. It's probable for how I see things. Um, I have had thousands of readings and nothing ever happens, and I've had a few readings where it happens, 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 happens. So most people claim they're psychic. The true psychics are few and far between. Okay. Well, while we're on that subject now, uh, and by the way, Sylvia Brown is not held in very high reverence around here. I share with Coast to Coast. That's one that you... Well, that's that's, it. You know, people think she's it, and, and we're all gifted in different ways. It just depends yeah. on PR. All but right. Well, let's leave that alone. For, okay. <laughs> uh, question. Mm. Uh, there's a radio host by the name of Adam Carolla. No, I know You're Adam. familiar with Adam. <laughs> that says, he doesn't believe you're a true psychic. Right. What does he mean by that? Okay. I was on a show, the Tim Conway show on a Friday night. This is when KLSX was still um, in existence in, in Los Angeles on CBS radio. And um, I was a guest, and the following Monday, um, Adam, whose job was to rip people apart mm-hmm. as humor, which I took as a resentment, um, he took the segment I did with Tim Conway Jr. and made sure that whatever was proven on that show was the opposite. So he doesn't believe in psychics, meaning that I had a show on Sunday nights from 9 to 11. I had 50 calls a night, and he still didn't want to believe that I was who I said I was, whereas other people knew I was as accurate as I was. So he was just doing his job to insult me and bring me down, and it's yeah. on the Internet. And you didn't allow it to bring oh, you down? Oh, I didn't allow it. I can't even get it off YouTube or anything. It's, it's freedom of speech, but no, I, I heard it. <laughs> no, I mean, you didn't allow it to bring you down. Oh, it did I mean, there's going to be naysayers to anything and everything you do. No, it doesn't matter who you are, you know. But it did hurt. It does hurt. The negativity still hurts because I come from my heart, and I work very, very hard from my heart and soul to help people. And then when somebody slams me or berates me, it's like, wait a minute. I take it personally. Then I step back. It's still entertainment. It's still just the Internet. A couple of people are disgruntled. They can't hurt me. And that's what I've learned. You get thick skin. All right. I like to actually hear that from you, Linda Salvin. I get there. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's give a treat psychic to psychics, and we will take some phone calls okay. online too. We have Kate out of Boston, Massachusetts, and she says she's having having some difficult times. Kate, welcome to Provocative Enlightenment. Do you have a question for Linda? Thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I've just been having um, a stressful time with a past relationship that's turned into legal issues mm. and restraining orders and things like that. And um, Yeah, I can feel like a chokehold on you. What's yeah. your name? Um, David. Hold on. You have like another six, nine months of this, at least six more months. It's not, yeah. going, it's not going anywhere soon. That's yeah. where the soulmate, I mean, the... Um, the, the this is where the candles come in. The sweetening judgment is for legal problems. We can make him go away and drop the charges, or you drop the charges with the good luck power. A lot of it would dissolve. There's um, a jealousy around this guy that that's why he's so intent on continually harassing you because he's angry. You're the one that wanted out. Yeah, and and he just was. I mean, yeah, it's just become a. Um like, I'm, I'm almost, you know, not sure if I should just try to No, you're, run at, you're away at your wit's end. It's driving you myself. crazy. You're not sleeping. You're not eating. It's got you yeah. full of anxiety and fear. If you call me off the air at 888 509 1077. I'll be more than happy to help you. I go through this a lot with people. And there's ways to make him stop. With the candles, he'll shut up. Okay. He'll quiet down. And you can have your peace back. Okay. And do you see that I might be able to buy the building in the end? Or well, that's another that's question. Why don't you call me off the air, and then I can help you with all okay. that. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for calling, Kate. All right. Let's uh, talk to Jude out of Chicago, Illinois. Jude, welcome to Provocative Enlightenment. Thank you for taking my call. I'm really grateful for that. Hey, Jude. How can I help you? Hi. Um, I am really working hard on um, dealing with PTSD and with mm. financial matters. Um, I'm doing a lot of different techniques. I'm really working hard on that. I'm trying to not be in that poverty mentality and really recognize that 
and you know recognize. Okay, so what I'm what's the about. question? What's the question? My question. Sorry, my question is: Is do you see any any good things shifting in that area, and do you see it soon, by any chance? What's the PTSD stemming from? Um, what's uh, the trauma? Abuse. Because Abuse. once you break through that and once you understand what it does to you, everything else will fall into place. You're not able to function at full capacity as hard as you work. You're going around and around and around in circles until you deal with what's blocking you, which, which is the post-traumatic stress disorder. And I can help you with that even with the healing. Um, I've had people in similar situations in one session move forward. So, well, I am dealing with that. I mean, I'm doing TRE, I'm doing EFT, I did. It's not enough, otherwise it would be gone. No, if it was working, it would, you wouldn't have it. First thing you said is you have PT, PTS, PST, PTSD. If it was working, it would have resolved. I help people resolve it. I get rid of it so that you can right. function. So whoever you're going to is not doing enough, is what I'm saying. It's not helping enough. The financial situation looks like around September, October is where it starts to come into play for you. Interesting. Well, thank you very much. All right. Um, good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jude. Can I just uh, interject here? You know, people go to a lot of... This is, like I was saying before, who are some of the top psychics and healers in the country? There's a lot of healers. There's a lot of practitioners. But a lot of them... Keep it coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back, and there's no real result. I do one or two healings on someone. I never talk to them again unless they want more because the, I get the job done. Right. Just like with my candles. My candles work. You do one or two sets, boom, you've got some results. Whereas with other people, you do five, six, seven, eight, when it's going to work, when, when, when. I like to see action. So I make sure that the work gets done as opposed to wait, 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 wait. It might get there. You're also, if I may, uh, a bottom line kind of person, mm-hmm. uh, meaning you know, no uh, fluff. <laughs> well, <laughs> and 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 I'm not really interested in all the the tonalities. Just tell me what the problem is. I'll get right down. In fact, exactly. you've been accused of uh, being a bit nasty because of that yeah. uh, attitude. Uh, I, I personally, I like that, but I can understand why some people don't. A lot so. of people don't like it because they're used to having their hands shaked and coddled and all that but i've been doing this for 20 years and i used to be a little bit kinder at times but like i said i read by voice like i did with the FBI, uh, with the uh, detective's tape i hear something boom it goes right through me it comes out i don't process or filter and i'm not here to be your mom you want an answer? I'm a true psychic. I get the answer. I dissect it. I can evaluate it. Boom, here's the problem. I go right into the soul, just like the girl with PTSD. If she was really healed, the first thing out of her mouth wouldn't have been, I have PTSD. All right. Let's take another phone call. Heather in Niagara Falls, New York. Mm, so pretty there. It, it is, isn't it? Heather, welcome to Provocative Enlightenment. You have a question for Dr. Salvin. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi, uh, my life has come to a halt. Uh, personal relationships stopped, uh, money stopped coming in, and I feel like everything just stopped. Wait, I'm having a hard time understanding something no. about personal relationships. Can you help me, Alden? Um, well, I'm I'm having the same oh, problem. Okay. I, I, I think she's basically saying there's something everything, that everything is blocking is her. Halt. Yeah, everything is a halt. The personal relationship is at a halt. Money is not coming in. Okay, halt. okay. So that in that situation, when we have a spiritual block, Heather, we can remove the blocks, obstacles, negativity, and all the schmutz. I call it schmutz. <laughs> so you would do the good luck power candles, and you would see a lot of this lift. Like we open the door where it's anchored to the ground, and we remove it like a shield over you, and you'd start seeing things probably within two weeks. I have one girl from... Hollywood, Florida, going through a similar situation, and she wasn't, she was skeptical. And eight days into the first candle, she was like, Oh my God, I'm feeling better. I want more. So, um, a lot of times we go through karmic change, and sometimes it's astrological. In your situation, you just need a, it's like a spiritual enema just uh, to blow it all out. Okay. Um, and move is, it. There, is there anything you can look into in terms of the personal relationship? All of that will change once you get a lot of the negativity off of you. You're looking for the personal relationship, but you're not ready yet. Everything, you've got to get you back on path. Any suggestions as to what I... I'm sorry? Any suggestions there? I can't 
there. I can't understand Any that. Any suggestions? Yeah, why don't you call me off the air? Let's get into the good luck power. Then we could do the soulmate power, or I will take a look at the people around you. You may not even be attracting the right people, and I think that's where you're headed. Like, instead of going northwest, let's get, let's get you going southeast. Time for change. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for calling. Uh, we're going to go now to uh, Santa Rosa, California. Lisa in Santa Rosa has a very interesting question for you. Welcome to Provocative Enlightenment, Lisa. Your question for Dr. Salvin. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi, Linda. Um, well, I have a two-part question. First, I wanted to ask, I have a niece, my sister's daughter, who is um, missing. We think she's being trafficked for prostitution, and my sister is taking care of her two little... I don't little... do the missing persons thing. Okay. That's not my thing. That's like me doing with the animals. I can't. It's, 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 that's the detective work. I don't go there. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, well, then, also, I wanted to know if you saw any children in my future. And I don't do pregnancy because that's up to God. Those oh. are the two things I don't do. Sorry, that wasn't qualified before, but um, as far as children, I do within three years. I normally don't. Okay. But um, I don't like to project that, or pro- but but it's definitely around you. How three about years. a can? Which candle would be best for my sister for her daughter? I was looking at your candles. I didn't Sweetening see judgment, and um, there's one called um, St. Alex, which is called Memories, and that would be the truth to help locate. Memories, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would just call the 1-800 number? Yeah, and I'll be okay. here later. All right, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Linda, you must get asked uh, by a lot of people to do something like what our caller just asked, and that's to assist in something like a missing person. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, who do you recommend or do you uh, when I someone has that people, kind of need? I have a few people that I have um, gotten on the phone with and had like three-way conversations that I trust. One's a remote viewer. I do not do remote viewing. I think that's a beautiful, amazing talent and mm-hmm. gift where somebody can just like transfer themselves right into this situation or the room and they feel it or they see it. So when I get those kind of questions, I will call one of my associates. I'm also a member of the uh, American Federation of Certified Psychics and Mediums, and there's some really talented people there that I'll reach out to. Um, So you could you could offer a referral to someone like our our caller. Absolutely. All right, Linda. We have uh, just a little over a minute now, and I I don't think that's going to do justice if we were to try and take another phone call. So, as opposed to take another phone call, you have an interesting definition for metaphysics. Mm. I'd like to have you explain that to our audience. Okay. My definition of metaphysics is the combination of spirituality, the esoteric way of looking at life, religion beyond religion, actually, because religion is man-made. Esoteric is just what's happening on a universal level in combination with psychology. And um, when I studied and got my Ph.D., it was heavy on Jungian theory. And Dr. Carl Jung was one of the first metaphysicians to define synchronicity, which is how the planet works. When we get out of our way and we see how everything works in alignment, um, I believe that's the metaphysics. Why am I able to heal people through color words and energy? Why is it that I am able to connect with spirit from the other side if heaven is so many light years away? It's all in the synchronicity of energy, thought, and feeling, and it's that that we can't put our finger on. We can't verify it. It's not tangible, but we know it's there, just like in your world. All right. And we're out of time. The website is lindasalvin.com. Uh, we've come to the end of another hour of Provocative Enlightenment. I want to thank the team at Hay House Radio for making what we do on this show so easy and so pleasurable. And, of course, a big thank you to our guest, Dr. Linda Salvin, thank and you. to all of you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our show, and we'll join us again next week, same time and same place. And if you have comments on the show, do please uh, let us know. Okay, until next time, wherever you are in the world, remember... Believing in yourself always matters.